Right, so we're building out the back. We've got different options. Um, we're looking to find spaces to receive. Um, and we're calling the four square yellow boxes, no man's land. Those are the areas we might be able to move into. We've always talked about zone 14 and we've talked about getting in zone 14. But um, <clears throat> we're talking also now about, remember guys we worked on in training, inverted fullbacks in their own half? I'll assume that's a yes. Um, so we're doing that very early because we don't need two or three players wide. We just need two players wide, one on each side. So we want to come centrally so that we overload the area. Let's see if this works. Let me see. Right, so that's how we build out the back first, yeah? Everyone see that? Yes. Yeah, so the opposite to that, obviously, when we go along, is we're the opposite to that, we're narrowed. But on this, we're spread out. So we get in these kind of positions. And we work it around how the opponents press, if they press, which they'll probably press. So five, six, and four, they can't encroach. So that's our best option initially if we're going to build out the back. And there we go. Now they can encroach, but we've got time. The next one could be we're going to midfield. We bypass these three, we're going to midfield. We bypass the, the, the front line of the opponents and we get into midfield. That's the next one. Now, here's the one we talked about and we did in training where the wing backs invert. And again, it's the goal. Your goal is you're both good at distribution. So you've got to be on key with this one. If this wing back comes inside and gets free in this area because they didn't close it down, then or that area, then there's another option for you. And it gets us forward a little bit quicker. There we go. That's how we push forward. Right. So now we're looking at most teams defend high now. And again, on the day, if they defend deep, we will be we'll be prepared. We know how to do it. Um, we'll play in front of them rather than behind, but we're going to play in front. This is really, and I've said it's simple, it's effective, and it's unexpected for opponents. So we're looking to overload the numbers. And again, we've worked on this last year, but we've been away apart a long while. Um, so this is what I'm looking at here. And then, to be fair, our biggest mentality is changing the, the mentality of the wingers and the wingbacks who generally like to play well, are usually told to play wide, but we want, we want them to tuck inside. So the wing backs and the wingers have got to be really astute to this, to know when and where to tuck in, um, to overload the areas around zone 14. There's an example. So I wonder if I can do that again. I'm not going to, I'm not going to even attempt it. So we've pushed up, we've left them offside. We've got our back three. Well, now we're a back three because the six has dropped behind. But as we haven't really worked on that, six might stay in front because my centre backs told me they're confident about two. And then eight will push even further. It's very offensive. I would prefer us to drop in and then be like this. And then up front, um, we've got the winger inverting, we've got the Full back in, wing back inverting, wing back inverting, seven inverting. So, our we haven't shown, I haven't shown the defenders dropping off yet. So it's a little bit unrealistic, but it's just it's painting the picture to start with. Similar, just goes to the other side. Now this is where we get the. This is where it's beautiful, absolutely lovely for our two wing backs, whoever are playing in those positions at the time. They have got so much freedom to get forward and attack. Normally, they'd be here, because most teams, with all due respect, they play, they say, stay there, stay there. You're a wink, you're a fullback. But we're saying no, bollocks to that. And I think the opposition, if we catch them early, they can get to be surprised by suddenly our wing backs. I mean, they're, they're wide players, these two. 
should be tracking them, but they won't. They probably won't because it's because we catch them on the break. So now look, if you look now, lads, and again, it will look better when, when I show you how they drop off here. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six attacking in that area there. Now, a training last night, okay, half the size, third of the size of the pitch, easier to get close because there's not so much distance to run, but you've got the principles in. And also, we got so many shots in, the most shots we've ever had in training last night. And okay, again, I understand it's harder on a full-size field to get everybody in those areas early to get shots on goal. But you did the principle last night. It showed that you understood it, and it was really, really good. So I think, I think in time, we can develop this where we get in there. But we've got to be brave, and we've got to be brave in as much as uh, guarding against the counter-attack. That's, that's something else I'll do later if I have time. So there we're pushed on. Now, they, now, I've got them dropping off now, see, the two centre-backs at least. And that's how they will probably drop off. Now we've got the, all four defenders dropping off, which they probably would. But unless they took in there, we have got areas in here to, to exploit. Because we've played, because initially they defended high, so now we're playing it in behind them. So now we need to get in behind them. And this is where, again, oh, that went too quick, but never mind. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, six players. Um, and I honestly don't think, lads, that they will leave three up there anyway for a counter-attack. I don't think they'll do that. He'll probably get back. He'll probably get back. They might leave one up, so which means eight can push on, which means six can push on. They might leave one up, maybe. Now, if they have, if they play two up front, that's different. Then we leave three there. But if it's just one, then as I say, it's not likely they're going to going to be that well well organised to counter attack if we lose it. But as it happens in this situation, we haven't lost it. Now then, is 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 the crux of the thing that I really think we need to work on over, over this season is the and it, you know it's like a phase four. Um, it's the interchange of players. Our wing back, who starts here, is now there because he's got the freedom to get forward. We're encouraging him to get forward because we're going to have people who cover for him. Now, if he loses it there, then seven drops in early to cover. That gives us that little bit of, you know, rotation of players. And and I, I love this part. I'm dying for a wing back to score from a situation like that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, right, we're going to go to transition moments, and on this one I talk on it, and it's freaking boring, but just bear with me, because I think what's really important that we learn, lads, is when we get possession, we play, Ryan will agree with this a thousand percent, we play simple, we keep the bloody ball, we don't give it away cheap, we don't be fancy down, we don't try the hard part, this kind of covers that, I've said this out before, I don't know if you watched it or not, if you did, great. If you didn't, that's fine. You're going to watch it now. <coughs> I think this one, it hits home a little bit on what we what we don't do well that we can improve on. And it comes down to being a team player, not being an individual, individual player. That's what it really comes down to. So do you see it on your screen? I see it from me, not from you. Well, if you're seeing it, that's great. Uh, for our players, oh, yeah. What's the best, what's the best outcome for this? Uh, yeah, I've got it. I can see it now. Can everybody hear it okay? And, uh, we give the ball away. Yes. Right. I'm going to have to ask you to stop it occasionally then. That's fine. So can you stop it now? I just want them to read this. Oh, can you run it back maybe? Yep. Good lad. Yeah, I just want them to read this. Because this is important. Do you know how to do the second uh, session, Brian? 
just keep playing it or a different file? Well, we'll have to do it again, won't we? Because we need more than 10 minutes for this. Um, Jan can get, Jan, can you get it? I'll, I'll send her a note. Oh, no, she said it. She said she'll send a, a link. That's great. Thanks, Jan. All right. So transition moments. Um, I'll talk. It, I'll just talk. I'll let it go. I'm talking on it. Is that working all right? Yeah, I think so. Good. So there's an example for you. Uh, we were up to play to 10, kept the intercepts, and now we've got 11, 10, 9, 7, already pushed on and attacking. I think we're going to go forward. And then now we've got our back, back players uh, recovering back from the pressure. This is the result of that, for example. So, so that... Um, that moment, transition moment, is really vital in the middle of the minute to maintaining it. So in that situation, sometimes you just got to play simple and keep the ball. Otherwise, this is what occurs. This is a slightly better version. You see there on the attack. I mean, knock a ball in there, and am I really, am I really in trouble? So, what can we do about it? Let's have a look. This will be a great opportunity here. Um, this is on. Our number six situation, we play an early ball into the striker, and that's a brilliant, that's a brilliant thing to do when we get it in there quickly. Um, and then if we lose it in here, at least a long way away from the balls and they're not going to get a couple of times. So that was that's the first option. Next option would be have simple passes side to side. That would be a really easy way of doing it. Again, maintaining possession. It's not as um, exciting and as direct as playing the nine with a chance to score, but certainly being patient and, and maintaining possession of the ball, which is, as I say, vital. The other one would be F and G. They, they press us very quickly, six and a half play forward, plays it back, we drop off. And now, if you look, we've, we've played with patience and we've kept possession. Um, here's an example. Press very quickly. Six was the time you fancy that and play Hollywood pass or Hollywood dribble. Ball it and place it back and we're in possession of the ball. Now then, from this moment, good things can come from bad situations. So if you think we, we're playing from attack to defence, uh, we go to attack again in, in this prime area. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So we're playing, we're attacking. We ask our players to condense centrally. One, two, three. Four, five, six against three. That's that's how we want to attack. So we overload on fourteen. Um, but in this case, we lose possession with a bad pass. What are we going to do? And uh, what would be the solution to this? Well, frankly, because we pressed very early, it's perfect. Because if you look at our situation now, the ball's going to be. B's obviously going to control it and do something with the ball. First of all, by the time B has controlled it, he or she. We'll be under pressure because we're going to press really quickly from what was an attacking situation that becomes a defending situation now. Just watch this. Boom. I love it. Not only that, we push up as a team. So you see our back players now. We're all going to come next from here as a team. We leave those three offside. Now we're in a superb situation in the uh, zone body to attack the score. Sorry, but I wasn't able to keep it to 